The burden of love is the burden of having to repay good with good. <laughs> yeah. The burden of love is the burden of having to repay good with good. Proverbs 13 verse 21, it says, evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous, good shall be repaid. Good must be repaid. Good is something that must be repaid. If somebody does good to you, it must be repaid. Maybe you don't, you are not aware that good must be repaid. Many times I see some of my pastor's children or the bishop's children or, they are, or some church members' children, people that have been in church for years and so on. When I see the child, because many times you cannot repay good to someone who has done good to you, but sometimes you can repay his child. <laughs> it's true. Sometimes you can't, you can't repay Someone, because maybe you may not have the chance, but you have sometimes a chance to, to somewhere, somehow repay good for good things that have been done for you. I mean, it may, to me, my pastors are my family. So many times when I see their children and so on, I feel a debt to repay some good for these people that have been faithful to me all these years. Especially when you see unfaithful people, you, 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 you even value faithful people more. Repaying of good. Remember when something good is done to you, put it in your heart, I will repay. I will repay this thing, what you have done for me. I will repay you. God will give me a chance to one day say thank you and repay a good that has been done to me. Have it in your mind and in your heart. The Bible says that for the righteous man, good shall be repaid. God has done so much good for us. Look at you sitting here, decent, come to church with nice whatever. <laughs> we sit as if there's nothing to do. Huh? You see, you sit as if there's nothing to do. We must spend our life repaying the good that has been done to save us, to save our lives, and to save our souls. You see, when you see this young man, uh, uh, come back. <laughs> My question is, why him? I, I don't know, do you know, can you tell us why you, your friend's funeral, he had two best friends. One funeral was on Friday, and one started 20 years imprisonment in the UK last month. So my question is, so you, what is special about you? Can you tell us any differences? I, I, was, I was even worse than... than you friend. were worse than worse. them. <laughs> he was worse. He was worse. And why is he saved? So it's like, you don't even understand. That's why I, the other scripture that I quoted, by the mercies of God, or because of the mercies of God. Mercies is the love. Offer a living sacrifice. You must repay and have in mind. You see what Reverend Steve have done for you, and Reverend, uh, his wife, and the pastors. Do you see? Praying with you when you were in court. The jury was about to say, whatever, fasting, fasting. So one day, you may, you may not see Reverend Steve to repay him, but you may be somewhere and you see a child or a young person and say, I, I want to, what, how I was saved, I want to do something to help this person to repay the good that was done to me, to save me. If I can show goodness to somebody's child, I, I, I don't know, maybe you may not see him or even his child. But you see, that is what God expects from you. Because the Bible says to the righteous, good shall be repaid. 
It is the will of God for you to say thank you. Put your hands together for this. Now, when you don't take up the burden of love to repay good with good, you end up repaying. Amen. Evil for good. When good is done for you and you don't actively pay. You know, when the church doesn't get involved in reaching out, we get stagnated and start quarreling, fighting, doing bad things. It's because we have energy. Energy and time. That's why I say that. Anybody who is always on social media, you, you are not spiritual. It is unspiritual people who are always on these things. Yeah. And it is changing your personality. Your personality is changing. changing because on the ground there is nothing. Now the Bible says that don't pay evil with evil. Even evil is not supposed to be repaid with evil. How much more good? Huh? Oh, you don't get what I'm saying. First Thessalonians 5 says, nobody should repay evil with evil. 5.15. See that no one repays evil with evil. So if you are not supposed to repay evil with evil, how much more when good has been done to you and you repay it with evil? Is it not worse? Are things not getting worse? Be careful. There is a burden of love on you. And when somebody has been good to you, like your father or your mother, you must remember the person is special to you. Even if you think your father has not done anything good for you or your mother has not done anything, your mother could have dropped you when you were a baby. And almost everything that a parent has done for you, you don't know really. Because it's when you grow up, then you, you, you start to even appreciate certain things. You wonder, eh, hey, so what were they doing? You can't even imagine your mother in love. Because she doesn't look so loving now. She looks different from how maybe she was. Hmm. Be careful when this burden of love, you see, when someone has loved you, you are in danger of repaying the person with evil. Yes. Why do you think there are so many cases in the world? It's because people are repaying good with evil. So when somebody has repay, has done something good for you, you have to be careful. I think that perhaps that is why years ago, the Holy Spirit told me, go and honor Archbishop Duncan Williams. He told me, I was a student, honor him. I, I, I didn't really understand it, but just that, that I, I was, I, w I went to church there whenever I went to church, just for whatever I didn't go much and all. That is not the point. But it's like, be careful. Because it was almost like God had now given me an instruction that saved me from becoming one of the many people who criticize him. Many people criticize him. Many people say negative things about him. But because the Holy Spirit told me, do something good, then it sort of cut me out of whatever bad things came up it was like, hey, hey, media, God has told me that I should honor him. And that was it. It saved me. Be careful. Many parents, if you are not having in your mind, I owe my parent, you'll be surprised how you behave towards your parent. If you don't have it in your mind, I owe my mother and I owe my father. I owe my mother. It's a burden for the love they have shown me that my mother has loved me. My father has 
loved me and cared for me and taken me to school, I have a burden, a burden to repay good with good. And if I don't have that in my mind, before you realize, you are repaying good with evil. Many children fall into that case. And many scriptures are against you. Psalm 7 verse 3. Oh Lord my God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him that without cause is my enemy. Without cause. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. And yet let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay my honor in the dust. Seller. That is, if in case I will rise up to repay good with evil. Instead of the church languishing in its prosperity and forgetting about soul winning. A lot of evil has increased in Ghana. Today, almost every day you hear of murder. Murder, like it's something that has not been in Ghana and it's a sign of the presence of the devil. The Bible says Satan was a murderer from the beginning. All our preaching has not changed much in Ghana because the population is also increasing. There is more evil in Ghana from, than when our church started. All the preaching, all the branches we've done and all the crusades we've done ha- are I believe that it has done some good, but it looks like compared to the growth of the evil, it's almost nothing. We have a debt. We have a debt. We have a burden. We have a burden because he's loved us. God so loved the world. Don't joke with that verse again. Say, God so loved, I receive a lot. No. It's a serious thing. When a man comes to you and says, I love you, you look at him up and down carefully. Can I do this work? <laughs> Can I do this work? Amen. The burden of love. In Luke chapter 13. The burden of love is the burden to be real and not a hypocrite. When somebody loves you, you owe the person a burden to be genuine. When someone loves you and finds out that you have been pretending all these years, it's the greatest slap in the face of the person who loved you. When a person finds out that as you've been saying, I love you, I love you, not knowing that you didn't love the person at all, there's nothing more wicked. In Luke 13, there was a woman who had an issue of a spirit of infirmity. And when Jesus saw her, he called and said, Woman, thou art loosed. And he laid his hands. And the ruler of the synagogue said, How could you heal her on the Sabbath day? And the Lord answered in verse 15, Luke 13 verse 15, You hypocrite! Eh? (laughs) Does not each of you on the Sabbath lose his ox and ass from the stall and lead him to watering? Eh? You see, hypocrisy. You do this for animals. But when it comes for doing for God or what is right, you now come up with technicalities. You come up with reasons and excuses which are so, so fake. You see people traveling all over the world, going to live in other countries to do courses, going to stay in other places, sacrificing for everything. But when it comes to preaching, when it comes to preaching, when it comes to giving, when it comes to supporting the work, you see people traveling with their families for funerals. Six tickets, four tickets, one ticket, there's no ticket that's less than a thousand dollars. You see them coming, when they have to give thousand dollars or to give something, oh, it's not uh, whatever, technicalities. Jesus stood and looked at the people and said, look at them now, look at what they are saying. They said that it's Saturday. So they can't, it's not the right time. They should have waited for uh, about eight hours more before you heal. And you come up with technicalities and reasons why not. You say that the pandemic is whatever, but during the pandemic, you see people traveling. Somebody told me the other day, 
She was at uh, Doha Airport, Qatar Airways, full up. United Airlines, full up. Delta, full. Every airline, full. They are traveling as though, I mean, there's nothing like a pandemic. But when it comes to God, <laughs> oh, it's Saturday, it's Saturday. It's a, oh, it's not the right time. Or oh, there's some, you know, when somebody loves you, be real, eh? Stop your pretense. People who are intelligent, they see through fakeness. They see through lies. They see through pretense. They see through excuses. You see somebody making excuses. You just look at the person after that. You pity the person. Let's stop pretending. Look at us young people. You say you can't work for God at this time. You just came to church. What do you do? What do you spend your time doing? Your father sent you to school. Look at the things you do outside school. Some don't go to school. They don't go for lectures for the whole term. Just the last two weeks, they sit down and they learn to pass exams. Stop pretending that you can't do things for God. You can't work for the church. You can't work for God. Stop the pretense and the fakeness. You can't give to healing Jesus. You can't travel. You can't do this. You can't do this. What are all these fake things? Why do you behave fakely and pre pretend, full of pretense towards someone who loves you or who even likes you? Why? Why are we so full of pretense? So it's Saturday, so we can't heal. Why? What is it? What is it? When I met one of our little ch children, so we go to Kumasi for a uh, student something. Don't know anybody there. Go and do everything that can be done. Two days and come back. Meanwhile, you are a student. Your, your mother knows you are in school in Accra. You've done everything that can be done. No. You owe to the one who loves you to be real, genuine, without take off all the mask, take off all the acting. When you marry in real life, there's no acting. The, the head will go off, that this will go off, this will go, that your face is washed, whatever, all these things that are painful. Painful shoes will be off. Everything will be off. It's just the you. <laughs> face to face. <laughs> I said, well, face to face. 